Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Rob Willis.info here, and in this video, I want to talk about the basics of using the Metasploit framework that's included on the latest version of Kali Linux. If you don't already know, the Metasploit framework is a project that makes writing and utilizing exploits relatively easy, and its components are all very modularized. Metasploit basically has everything you need for exploitation, from the exploits themselves, to the payloads, to post-exploitation modules, and more. What exactly does all this mean? Well, in this case, it means remote command line access with system level privileges. Alright, so for this lab, I want this to be as quick and painless as possible, so I went ahead and set up a wide open uh, known vulnerable machine, and uh, that's going to be the VM on the bottom right here. And it's a 2003 R2 server, it's not been patched, it's just sitting there wide open, and like I said, known to be vulnerable. And uh, here's my uh, Kali Linux VM here, and uh, both of these machines are going to be on the same local area network, um, but this is just a Kali Linux 2016 image uh, with the basic updates run and VMware tools installed. And let's take a quick look at our other VM here. Uh, like I said, it's just a run-of-the-mill Windows Server 2003 R2. No patches installed, no uh, Windows firewall enabled or anything like that. It's just a wide open box. Um, so let's pull up a command prompt and uh, see some info about the host real quick. And we see the host name. And let's pull up the uh, IP config because we'll need the IP address for when we uh, run the exploit. And we see it's 119. And then I'm just going to go ahead and exit to command prompt. And let's head back over to our Kali Linux VM. Alright, so now that we have our target and we know its address, it's time to go ahead and launch Metasploit. So I'm going to go ahead and click the M to launch the Metasploit framework and uh, give it a second to load up here. And while it's doing that, I'm just going to go ahead and maximize this window. If you get it just wide enough, it makes the text look all nice and neat whenever it uh, displays the big list. And uh, let's just give it a second to load the uh, framework. Alright, so as that wraps up, we see it returns some version info about the installation, along with the amounts and types of modules that are installed. Um, but to get started, the first thing we need to do is type show exploits. And uh, this is going to return a big list of all the exploit modules that are available in this installation. Um, but like I said, it is a big list, so it's going to take a second to load. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip ahead a little bit. And we see it returns this huge list of exploits available to us. And uh, you could scroll through them all, um, but the important thing to note here is the name on the left-hand side, because you're going to need to know that whenever you tell Metasploit to use one of them. Um, but if you know exactly what exploit you're, you're looking for specifically, you can just type search. And in this case, I'm going to use MS08067, which is a uh, Windows vulnerability. And we see that there is an exploit module for that. So we can just copy that name down. And then if I just type use, and then I paste that name, Metasploit will go ahead and mount that module. So now that we've uh, mounted the exploit, you see that the uh, command prompt will change and show that it's mounted. Um, one of the other things we can do is type show targets, and that will show us all the target operating system that this exploit module applies to. And we see that Windows 2003 is listed. So the next thing we need to do is set the payload. So we can do the first thing we can do is type show payloads and it'll show us all the payload modules that are available for this particular exploit. The payload's going to be the bit that runs after the exploit on the remote computer that makes it do what we want it to do. So in this case, I'm just going to do a Windows shell bind to TCP and it's going to give me a command prompt right back into the Metasploit session of the remote machine. So I'm just going to type set payload, and I'm going to paste the name of the uh, payload module that I've selected here. In this case, Windows Shell Bind TCP. And uh, we see that it bound the, uh, the payload. So let's go ahead and show the options that are for the exploit module and the payload. And in this case, we need to set the R host to the uh, remote machine's IP address. Now we've seen earlier that it was uh, 192.168.2.119. Uh, so I'm just going to type set R host. 192.168.2.119 and that's going to be the IP address of our Windows machine. Alright, so I'm just going to type show options again just to uh, verify my settings stuck and they did and uh, that's it. So let's go ahead and run the exploit by typing exploit. Okay, so we see it start running through the exploit here and it should just take a second. And we see that it returns a Windows command prompt. So let's go ahead and begin by starting by uh, just typing hostname and we see that it does return 03R2 so let's go ahead and hop on the uh, Windows box here and pull up a command prompt and I'm just going to type in the same command hostname and it does return the same hostname so next up I'll run a netstat and uh, just to see what network connections are going on and we do see the connection over uh, 4444 to the uh, Kali Linux machine so obviously you would never want to use that port in real life because it sticks out 
But uh, on the Linux machine, let's go ahead and run Who Am I? And we see that uh, I actually have system level permissions on that remote Windows machine. So I can basically do whatever I want at this point. And then uh, running a netstat ANO, it should show the uh, same results we saw. Uh, and it does. And uh, so basically we have full command line access of the remote Windows machine. We can go ahead and establish persistence now. We can add users, install software, all that kind of stuff. And uh, we can also shut it down. And I'm just going to do it just to show you. I'm going to do a shutdown, restart in five seconds. And we see that the system is now shutting down. Now, so I haven't established any persistence. So I am going to lose this session whenever the system reboots. So I'm just going to go ahead and exit out now. Um, but obviously this was kind of a perfect case scenario. Um, I went into this knowing the IP address of the host, the patch level, and all that stuff, and exactly what exploit I was going to use against that host. Now in the real world, you can obviously spend a lot of time, um, one, figuring out who the host is going to be, and then doing various scans against it to figure out what operating system are they running, what software are they running, is it vulnerable, what exploits are available for that software and whatnot. Um, but this was more about just giving you a demonstration of uh, how to move through Metasploit and tie the various commands together. So uh, I was pretty much planning on wrapping up there, but um, since the uh, Windows VM is back up and running and I still have the Metasploit session open, uh, let's go ahead and do something a little bit different. Um, let's do the same exploit, the uh, MS080067, and a different payload. So I'm going to type show payloads, and uh, let's go ahead and do one of the uh, VNC ones. So I'm going to go with the uh, Windows VNC inject, and we'll do the bind TCP, and I'm just going to set the payload and paste that name of the payload there and uh, this should give us a remote VNC session and I'm just going to do a show options real quick just to make sure there's no options I have to set and uh, it actually remembered the settings from the last time so uh, that's it and I'm just going to go ahead and log into the Windows machine real quick over here and uh, VNC unlike RDP uh, doesn't do the whole screen locking thing so you should actually just see whatever's on the screen uh, and that also works the other way too so if you remote control it that user will see you remote controlling it and now uh, let's go ahead and type exploit to run the exploit and we see it pops up with a VNC session and so there you go uh, basic exploitation using Metasploit and uh, Kali Linux yeah so it doesn't look like the mouse is actually working but uh, anyway so that's pretty much gonna wrap this one up I really hope you guys enjoyed this one and uh, thanks for watching uh, if you did really like it, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, hit me up in the comment section down below with any questions or comments. And uh, thanks for watching.